everyone, my name is Deanna and I'm a woman's health nurse practitioner. For those subscribed to my channel, welcome back. And for those new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the alarm bell notification so you're notified of new videos that I release every week on everything women's health from birth control, pregnancy, healthy living, periods, everything. And I love hearing from you to know what other topics you want me to talk about and cover. So definitely reach out, feel free to comment below any questions you have. Make sure to give me a thumbs up for this video. Also check me out on my Instagram. I'm over at at underscore the ladies guide. And I love interacting with you ladies on there as well. Any questions you have, feel free to DM me. And that's what's amazing about technology these days that we have the ability to connect with people all over the world and it's great. So definitely if you're interested in women's health issues, keep watching. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about HPV or the human papillomavirus. I think there's so much like craze around HPV and then the commercials and the news and the vaccine and it is a lot and I find in practice that most of my patients really know nothing about it. I would say both in practice and personally um, with friends and things don't usually know a lot about it and it's a pretty big deal that we should know what this virus is, how serious it is, and what we can maybe do about it to prevent or avoid getting it potentially. So it's definitely something that is vital that you have some kind of understanding of. And so here we go. <laughs> I actually talked a few weeks ago about pap smears. So definitely check out that video because that kind of links what I'm about to say a little bit more. Um, if certain things are confusing, I'll link it below to check out why we need pap smears, who needs it, why it's important. But today I'm just gonna be talking about HPV. So HPV is a sexually transmitted virus that over 80% of both men and women will have at some point in their life. I say unless you never have sex your entire life or you've only ever been with one person and that person has only ever been with you, then you theoretically have a 0% chance of getting this virus. Otherwise, most people will come in contact with this virus and most people won't even know that they have this virus because you'll come in contact with it, your body will suppress the virus and no big deal. But in some people, the virus can progress and linger around and this is where we can get concerned because there are hundreds of different strains of HPV. Not all the strains are dangerous. There are certain strains of HPV that can cause genital warts and there are certain strains of HPV that over the long term can lead to cancer in both men and women. Now I'm going to be talking more in the context of women. Um, so why pap smears are so important is because they're screening for cervical cancer, which is almost always caused from HPV. Now, typically it is in women who have very weak immune systems or maybe have not seen a GYN provider for a while. And then when they go in, the virus has already progressed too much that it has led to cervical cancer. Otherwise, as I mentioned in my last video, is that cervical cancer is very slow growing, meaning that from completely normal to cervical cancer, there's a lot of little steps along the way that your cells can start changing and have some abnormalities before we actually get to cancer. And it's HPV that is changing the cells little by little and making them more abnormal. But for the most part, in a healthy woman, the virus will be suppressed on its own by your body, and it's not something we really have to worry much more about. You, uh, by getting the routine pap smears that we recommend, we're able to really stay on top of things and screen for cells that have changed more. Um, but most of the time, women may have HPV that shows up on a pap smear, and then you will, depending on what the result is, so it kind of depends on what the cells of your cervix look like. Are they completely normal with HPV? Are they a little bit abnormal with HPV? And that's something you will have a direct conversation with with your provider because that kind of determines what the next step is. It also matters too how old you are. Typically women in their 20s, we will hold off on doing more procedures and usually we'll recommend to just repeat the pap smear in six to 12 months, depending on what your result is, versus when you're older in your 30s, Sometimes we're a little bit more, um, I don't want to say aggressive, but we're just a little bit more proactive with doing 
further testing if necessary, depending again on what your results are. So this video is not at all supposed to replace seeing your healthcare provider in person, especially because each of you may have your, you all have your unique stories, but you also can have very different results and a different history if you've had prior abnormal pap smears, and this will all play into what the recommendations are. But right now I'm just talking about HPV. And the fact is, is that HPV is something that is so common and unfortunately, there is no way to tell when you could have gotten it or who gave it to you. Remember I mentioned, it's 80% of both men and women. However, there is not routine screening that's done for men. Therefore, men will have no idea that they have HPV. And the one that we care about that, causes, can, that can cause cancer typically causes no symptoms at all. Nothing, there's no wart, there's no anything. So it makes it very tricky to really have any clue of who you could have gotten this virus from. It does not necessarily mean that your partner has been unfaithful. Unlike other STDs that yes, there is a little bit more of uh, an idea that this is something that you contracted recently. Um, with HPV, because it's a virus, you can be exposed at any point and it can remain dormant in your body. And then if you're under more stress, your immune system weakens, it might show up on a pap smear. So there is no way to know if this is a brand new thing that you just became exposed to right now, or if you could have been exposed to this from the past, you could have been exposed to this from your partner who was exposed from another partner from the past and not necessarily mean a current infidelity. And so it's very complicated. And I get this question all the time, like, so when did I get this? When did this happen? What should I do? And all of this, and I know it's, it's a very, it could be very upsetting when you find out that you have any kind of virus, anything going on within your body. But the truth is, is that we don't really know. It's complicated. The important thing is that you're trying to stay as healthy as possible and you follow the recommended screening or whatever procedure is recommended for you, that you really have a good conversation with your provider and never feel pressured or forced into doing anything, but having that conversation with them. And if you ever feel uncomfortable, maybe getting a second opinion just to make sure that um, whatever you decide to do feels good and you have two different opinions on it. Um, because different providers will do different things and there are national guidelines that are in place, but sometimes providers do things differently. Sometimes that is a good thing and sometimes maybe not so much, but it's also so important that you feel comfortable as well. So I can't stress that enough that um, make sure your voice is heard and any questions you have are never silly, stupid questions. If your provider makes you feel like that, then you should probably see somebody else. But my point of this video is really just to shed light on the fact that it is an extremely common virus that most people will resolve on their own that you don't need to freak out and worry that this is like the most terrible result in the world because the truth is is that it's just very common and it's something that usually your body will actually combat on its own and not much we really have to worry about besides that. Um, now the vaccine is something that is recommended because we have now seen that um, people who get this vaccine, and it's recommended in both men and women, that they are able to dramatically reduce their risk of getting cervical cancer because you're getting some immunity to some of these viruses. Now there's over a hundred different strains of HPV. So the vaccine does not have all hundred strains in the vaccine. It's probably, it's only about eight of them. Some that can cause genital warts and some that could cause cervical cancer. So it's not all of them. So it's not hundred percent perfect in protecting you completely, but it definitely has shown to reduce your risk of cancer. So it's something again with, with vaccines, it's a very personal decision. So you need to feel comfortable, do your research, talk with your provider if you have any questions and then make the best choice that you feel is right for you. I am a big believer on that, not forcing it. It's ultimately your decision. So I hope this video was helpful. Definitely comment below if you have any questions or any topics you want me to cover in the future. Love always hearing from you. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up as well. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my future videos. Bye.